This is the 2024 Pivot Switchblade. Now it's the third generation of the platform and it represents quite a dramatic evolution from the original model that launched all the way back in 2016. Now I'm out here in Phoenix, Arizona, home of Pivot Cycles. We're here to check out the Pivot factory and the R&D facility to see how new bikes are designed, prototyped and tested in-house. We're also here to spend some time riding the new Switchblade. Now while it might look similar to the outgoing model it does get a new frame and there are key updates to both the geometry and the suspension design. In this video I'll be going into detail about what's changed on the new switchblade and my first impressions of riding it on the trail. Sitting in between the Trail 429 and the Firebird, the Pivot Switchblade is the brand's do-it-all mountain bike. It features 160mm travel fork, 142mm of rear travel and 29-inch wheels. There is a flip chip though which does allow you to run it as a mullet, more on that in a bit. The full carbon frame has been updated for 2024. The weight stays around the same, but it is significantly longer and slacker. It also features a revised DW Link suspension design. The linkages are all new, including a longer lower link, which is designed to provide a more rearward axle path. The goal here was to elevate the switchblade's descending performance by improving its ability to gobble up square edged hits. Pivot says the updated kinematic also delivers more grip for technical climbing. While there is no internal frame storage, there's plenty of room for a full-size bottle, along with accessory mounts underneath the top tube and down tube for carrying tools and spares. One thing you won't find on the new Switchblade, however, is Fox Live Valve. Of course, Live Valve was a big feature on the old Switchblade and many other Pivot models since, but it's no longer an option on any of the builds for the new bike, and that adds credibility to the rumors that the next generation generation live valve system will be a very different beast. Otherwise the switchblade sticks with its 92mm wide press fit bottom bracket and the super boost hub spacing. Pivot states that these features allows it to build a sturdier and more durable chassis and that the wider hub flange spacing creates a stiffer rear wheel. The shapely swing arm also offers masses of clearance for up to a 29 by 2.6 inch tyre or a 27.5 by 2.8 inch tyre. There's loads of noise dampening frame armour and tyre bolt-on cable ports and on that note we're glad to see Pivot continuing to flip the bird at the trend for through headset cable routing. As for geometry, the head angle has slackened out by almost a full degree compared to the old bike. That now comes in at 65.2 degrees. Pivot has steepened the effective seat tube angle by half a degree and that now comes in at 76 degrees. The reach has also increased by 10 millimeters. On our medium sized test bike, that comes in at a very generous 465 millimeters. Pivot has also moved to size specific rear center lengths, though the difference is pretty minor. The smaller frames get a 431 millimeter rear centre, while the extra large grows to 436 millimetres, which is such a small difference it seems hardly worth it. There are a load of different spec options available for the new Pivot Switchblade, with prices kicking off at around 10 grand. It's worth noting that all models are built around the same premium level carbon frame. This differs to brands like Yeti and Santa Cruz, which also produce a cheaper and heavier carbon frame to help lower the price of entry. There will also be a limited edition model of the Switchblade that features a ludicrous high vis pink paint job. Now that's designed to celebrate the 35th anniversary of the first mountain bike produced by Pivot's owner, Chris Kokalas. A bright and bold reminder of just how far our sport has come in the last 35 years, there will be just 300 of these frames produced worldwide. For the launch of the new Switchblade, I was lucky enough to ride the very top end Team XX model, which will retail for a frankly astonishing 18,000 Australian dollars. Now that bike gets all the bells and whistles, including Fox factory suspension with a 36 grip two fork and a Float X shock. There's a RockShox reverb access wireless dropper post, a SRAM XX transmission and code alt ultimate brakes, a DT Swiss XMC 1501 carbon wheel set and Maxxis XO Plus tyres with a Minion DHF on the front and a DHR on the rear. 
Confirmed weight for our pivot switchblade test bike was 14.14 kilos, and as usual, that's without pedals and with the tire set up tubeless. Now, it's worth noting that while the Team XX is the most expensive model, it isn't actually the lightest. That mantle goes to the Team XTR build, which I weighed in at 13.94 kilos. Now, while I've only had limited ride time on the pivot switchblade, so far I've been impressed. The DW Link suspension is a notable highlight. It's predictable and consistent, and it's got a nicely stable ride quality. Since the rear shock doesn't wallow in its travel, there's a useful amount of ground clearance for pedaling over technical features. It's still beautifully smooth and active though, offering great sensitivity and more grip than its predecessor. Along with a taut chassis, the Switchblade is a fantastic technical climber. It's also a noticeably sturdier bike on the descents. There's more front centre for you to push into, with the slacker head angle and the longer reach encouraging a centre forward attack position. The updated suspension design also kicks things up a notch, with the more rearward axle path, allowing it to swallow up big impacts with minimal fuss. The Float X has felt great from the get-go. It's got a fairly neutral tune, and I haven't needed to touch either the air pressure or rebound damping after the initial setup. However, the blue low-speed compression dial has been useful for adjusting the bike's attitude to suit different trail conditions. On steeper and flowier terrain, I opened up the compression damping to allow the shock to sit a little bit lower in its travel. On rockier trails, I set the dial about halfway to add a little bit more support and lift up the ride height. In both scenarios, the back end of the switchblade has felt really smooth and controlled. There's great support, and with a 0.5 volume spacer inside, there's options for tuning the progression in either direction. Combined with a longer wheelbase, the top-notch suspension really does elevate the Switchblade's composure at speed. There's more grip and stability to tap into, and that sees it effectively closing the gap on the bigger travel Firebird. As for downsides, well, I'm yet to encounter any glaring issues with the new Switchblade. It is quite a bit longer than the previous version, so you need to ride it accordingly to properly weight the front tire on flatter gradients. I found I was able to adapt to it pretty quickly, but there were still moments on the trail where I was wondering if I might be between sizes. It would certainly be interesting to try out the small, which could be an interesting experiment. Speaking of experiments, I did manage to try out the pivot switchblade as a mullet. We flipped the geometry chip into the high position and fitted a 27.5 inch rear wheel with the same tyre that comes on the stock build. Despite using the flip chip, however, the BB was still clearly lower with the smaller rear wheel. I had to nose the saddle down and push it forward slightly, and while I didn't get a chance to measure the head angle, I suspect it pushed into sub 65 degree territory. Now heading up the mountain, I was surprised to find that the mullet setup was wasn't overly detrimental on the climbs. The rear suspension does a lot of the legwork here, allowing the rear wheel to get up and out of the way on square ledges. I was clipping the pedals a bit more though, so I would consider fitting shorter cranks to claw back some valuable ground clearance. Really though, it's on the descents where the mullet setup showed its true strengths. I felt more in the bike thanks to the lower BB and the slacker head angle, while the smaller rear wheel made it easier to carve turns and flip-flop between corners. The whole bike felt more enthusiastic when hitting drops and seeking out transitions making it more intuitive to really work the terrain. The extra bum clearance with the smaller rear wheel was also very much welcome. Now while first impressions have been good, I'd be keen to spend more time on the pivot switchblade on home trails, both with 29 inch wheels and the mullet setup. In the meantime, we've got quite a bit more info in the full review over at flowmountainbike.com. Make sure you hit the link in the video description below for everything you need to know about the new pivot switchblade. Otherwise, I hope you folks have enjoyed this video and we'll see you next time. Tooroo!